of the soldiers pierced Jesus' side with a spear, bringing a sudden flow of blood and water. And so just like what happened with Adam, Jesus is too pierced in his salot. Same word in Hebrew, right, where, where he's cut into his side. And what comes out of that is blood and water. Now, in Lee Strobel's book, and it's a, it's a great kind of connotation if you've read it, you know that, that one of the doctors were saying this is, this is how we knew that Jesus was dead, that, that there was water and blood that came, and, and the fact that water was produced somehow means that Jesus actually died up there, and he, he wasn't taken down, uh, not dead. Now, if you want me to explain that deeper, good luck. That's all I got, right? I mean, it's, that's it's, in a simplistic way, this is what happens, and, and, and he's dead. But, but, but it's interesting that, that what comes out of Jesus' side uh, is specified in John as not just blood, but blood and water. Blood and water. Now, there have been a couple times in my life in which I've seen water and blood, blood and water, as an experience uh, that I very much remember. I have five children, okay? I, I, and and uh, that's one too many than I, amen. I have five children, okay? And, and I, they're, they're young. I have five, we had five kids in six years. I've told you all that before, but every time I say it, everyone still goes, really? Like, for real? Like, on purpose? Like, right? Like, this is what, this is what you've done. But, but I've been able to witness five births, and I don't want to witness anymore. Like, I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm accomplished. It's finished, right? It is, it is finished with babies. In Jesus' name, amen. And if you don't agree, don't talk to me. I hate when people are like, oh, are you having more? I, I rebuke you, Satan. <laughs> Get behind me. No. Get away from me with those words. But, but every single time we had a child, more like she had a child and I watched well, right? In, in every single one of them, there was, there was a mixture of water and blood, right? That, that kind of how you know that the baby is ready is that your water breaks and, and first there's water and then there's blood. <laughs> amen? Right? I mean, we don't have to go deeper and hopefully we're adults in this room and, and amen, right? And then you got to get to the hospital quickly. If you're my wife, my, my wife had uh, our second son, Jacob, who's actually sitting in front of, uh, uh, right up here, uh, in, in about, we got to the hospital, and about 15 minutes later, we, she had that baby. I mean, it was, just, the whole ordeal took about an hour, right? So, so from the water breaking to the baby out was very quick. And it was, but, but this water and blood is, is kind of a birth. Because I believe that what happened on the cross was a death, but it was also a birth. You see, when God lays Adam on the ground, he cuts into his salote, his side, and takes out Eve, his bride. Jesus is too on the cross in John chapter 19. The centurion cuts into his side, and do you know what came out? We came out. The church was born on that day. Yes, it was a death, but, but it was also a birth. You were born that day, and you were born. The, the church, his bride, was born out of the side of Jesus. Amen. Amen. What I find profound about that whole idea is that he believes that you come from him, that, that he thinks you too can be like him. He's choosing to fight with you, to be connected with you, that, that he trusts you to come from him. That, that you aren't just a, a, a random anomaly that just happened into a church service and, and gave your life to Jesus. No, he chose you. He wants you. And he says, you come from me. You're from the best stock that there is. And you come from my side. I, I birthed you from me. The church was born on the day of his death. And so he calls us 
to say, now I move away from what I want for me into what he wants for me. Away from my agenda into the agenda that God is calling me to. Away from my needs and, and what I think I want for myself into what he is calling me into. Are you thirsty today? Are you thirsty for the things that God is calling you to? Are, are we truly hungering and thirsting after righteousness? And you belong to him today. And I think what is beautiful about this imagery is that, that he thinks and wants you to belong. And he says, you can be like me. And I trust you with what I have laid out for you. It is accomplished. It is finished. And now walk into this boldness. Walk into what I have for you. Walk into where he leads. Amen? Bow your head. Close your eyes. Father, I thank you that on this day, on the day that you gave your life, I was born. We were born. We came from you. We came from your side. We flowed from you. And so, God, I pray that you will cause us to trust you in that way. Lead us, God. Direct our path. Help us to see these words that you spoke. Very practical words, God. Words that were true of where you were at that moment. Woman, here is your son. Son, here is your mother. I am thirsty. It is finished. Very practical words that you spoke, but God, Jesus, so profound. And so God, I take these words and, and I pray, God, that you will cause us to live them out. Live out a boldness and a confidence into knowing who we are in you. Live out a thirsty lifestyle that hungers for more of you than in a dry and arid place we seek after you. And live out this idea that, God, it is accomplished, and in you we have everything we need for life and godliness. That we were born at the time of your death. We want so much more of you, Lord. And we pray, God, that you will shape us into what you want for us. Not our will, but your will be done. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.